Hey everyone, it's Justine. Welcome to a new video. I thought I'd do something a little bit different and these are the weird and some of these may be controversial things that card making content creators, so us on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, do that may seem confusing to a hobby crafter. So I thought I'd explain all of these things and of course not every content creator card maker um, applies to these things but these are general things that I find most people do and I'll let you know whether or not I do them and I'll let you know the reasons why. So let's dive in. The first thing I get asked probably the most often when I show how I organize something in the past anyway, is why do you organize by company and not by theme? So as a hobby crafter, most of the time it's going to make sense to organize by theme, birthday, Christmas, sympathy, thank you because then when you're going to create a specific card for someone and you know the occasion, it's all there for you. But for a content creator, it's a little bit different because oftentimes we're creating with a company or we receive something from a company. So out of courtesy, you kind of want to use as many of their products in the video as possible. So if, if I'm told to create a card with Spellbinders, usually I'm going to try and find a sentiment, the dies, the cardstock, maybe the inks and things that are all Spellbinders brand when possible. So it's just easier to have them all bulked together. I personally used to organize always by brand, but since I've worked less and less with companies over the years, I just kind of have my stamps and dies in themes as well. It just makes more sense to me. Number two is why do we get rid of retired product or a product that's no longer available or older product? Do we not love them? Is there, did we not enjoy creating with them? Are they not in style anymore? And usually that has nothing to do with it. And the reason, uh, this confused a lot of people when I did my purge video not that long ago where I showed you how I purge my stamps and dies. Why was I getting something, rid of something that's retired? I will only keep something that is retired from a craft company if it is absolutely like the love of my life product, okay? <laughs> something I really truly can't live without or I don't have anything similar. And the reason being is when I use this older product in my video and it's no longer available, I can't tell you how many emails and comments from disappointed people that I get that they can't find that exact product. And so I try not to disappoint people and I try to craft things with things that are available while always encouraging you, of course, to use the things in your stash but if you do love something I'm showing, it is available. The other reason is, if it's no longer available, content creators who have what's called an affiliate commission, or they earn a commission when you shop through their links, obviously don't have anything to link to, and therefore using that product won't earn them any sort of money. I'm not talking about millions of dollars here or anything close to anything that you can live off of. I'm just talking about those extra dollars that help us keep our channels running. The next thing is a little bit about a marketing thing and is why do we not offer free stuff without making you sign up for our newsletter? And that is a, I guess you could say a marketing tactic or a tactic as well to hang on to our audience. So the thing is, is most content creators are, have a larger following on a certain platform. So whether you're bigger on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok, whatever it ends up being, you're relying on what's called the algorithm, the chance of YouTube showing my video to someone. And the algorithm changes constantly. And if you aren't keeping up with the strategies and tips that they're giving, and sometimes even if you are, your content all of a sudden just stops being shown to people. You start just plummeting. Nobody's seeing your stuff in their feed. And that's why it's so important to have a newsletter so that we have our, your email address so we can let you know when our stuff is available and when you can watch things and how. And by offering you something for free, then the more likely it is that you'll give us your email address so we can let you know when we come up with cool content. One of the questions I get asked most as well is, did it really work that well the first time? Are you not showing your mistakes in your videos? Are you editing them out? And I would say that 99% of the time for me, um, I do not edit out my mistakes. I might edit out a mistake, for example, or just speed things up if I go to stamp something and I don't get the best impression the first time and then I just need to close my misty door a second time. Because you see that over and over again. And oftentimes I'll mention it as well. I needed to stamp this twice or three times. But I think a lot of content creators have the mentality that they need to show something perfect on the screen. Me personally, I like to show my mistakes and I know you enjoy that as well because I like to show you how you can fix them and sometimes when it's a lost cause. 
But yeah, I just think that it's people's perfectionist mentality that they just edit it out. Um, because if it didn't work once, it doesn't mean it's not gonna work the second time. But I like what, when a content creator is honest and says, hey, this took me like three, four times to get it right the first time. So then I can kind of adjust my mentality if I purchase that product, like, hey, this might not work the first time, it might require some practice, which a lot of crafting techniques require. Another thing, why do people link and say the name to every single thing that they use in their video down to the Tupperware container they put embossing powder in? The reason being is you just end up saving yourself a lot of time because someone's gonna ask. So it's just easier to lift, list all the supplies in the video description. The other thing is, of course, is what I talked about before, affiliate commission. So for those of you who don't know, a lot of companies offer a program. It's called an affiliate program. So if you sign up with them, you'll get something like five to 10% usually. Um, when someone clicks on your link and goes shopping at the store, the person that sent them to the store gets almost like a commission, five to 10% for sending you over there. So a lot of content creators want you to click on those links or will link everything just in case you have questions to not just be helpful, but also to kind of put that cookie in your computer so that they might make a commission at the end of the day. So just being completely transparent and honest here, a YouTube channel to run, yes, my content is free on here, but it costs money from the cameras you need to buy to lighting to softwares. I just recently did my taxes. I think it costs somewhere around 20 to $25,000 a year to run my channel. And so every little bit helps when it comes to those affiliate links. All right, I filmed this part probably 50 different times because I'm scared to say the wrong thing. And I think that that is a part of the problem. And the thing is, why do we not see negative reviews on tools, products that come out? Normally when a new, especially I'm going to talk about tools specifically here. When a new tool comes out, usually you'll see like all sorts of promotions. Um, you'll see a handful of people that have received the tool in advance so that they can make videos about it and tell you all about it. And most of the time it's all the pros and why the tool is so great. And some, some influencers will also then state, you know, there might be a couple of little things that, okay, you got to adjust this or mm, this didn't work so great or this, I had to try more than once, but it's, it's very carefully worded and carefully said, I would say. And very rarely are there a negative like a review where it's like, don't buy this. This sucks. <laughs> um, and 99% of the products that come out, I find are great quality and work just fine and work as promised anyway. So this really applies to just like a really small handful of experiences that I've had. And so here are my experiences. Um, I received a product, for example, that just wasn't for me. There was nothing wrong with the product. It was an auto sent to me and it was just something I would never ever use. And when I had written in just letting them know, like, I don't, I don't really feel comfortable showing a video like this. It's not me. It's not something I would ever use. So I don't think my following will also really like this. Um, I was kind of very, very pressured to show it. And that was one of the main reasons why I decided to just quit all design teams and just, I didn't like that. <laughs> um, I've also had the experience where I've written the company and let them know the issues that came up while I was using their product. Um, and sometimes that went over fine. They took the feedback, they improved their product. Sometimes they ignored it, which is also totally their, their thing. They can, they can definitely do that. Um, and then one or, once or twice, um, let's just say it did not go over well. Ha putting a brutally honest review out there is uh, difficult to do in our industry. And I get it. Um, there's a certain reason why. You also have, this isn't Amazon, Walmart, Joann's and Michael's. These are small family run businesses. One woman shows a handful of people, a family that are running a business that when an influencer comes out and says, oh, this product crap, um, that could go very badly for a small business. <laughs> of course, the small business's responsibility as well is to test their product enough so that they come up with something with good quality. Um, so negative reviews, you have to be very careful about in this industry, they could go very wrong. So Generally, I think a lot of content creators would prefer then to either not show it at all and just write them privately, or they will do a quick, they will do a quick video with it, but you won't see it maybe pop up again in their, in their channel. That's also, I find a, a bit of a, a sign, for example, if, if a, if a content creator puts a product, a new product up on their channel and then doesn't follow up and do any other videos with it again, um, that's probably something that they're not personally using, um, long-term which is totally fine. Not every tool's for everyone and not everyone has time to use all the tools that they have in their stash. 
Um, but yeah, that could be the reason. <laughs> So to tie back into the review idea, why do we also not see a lot of comparison videos out there? So there are the odd ones where people will compare different types of blending tools, or my friend Ardith just recently did ones on stamp positioners. You will see them now and again, but why do you not see a lot of them? And the reason being, and the, probably the most simple reason, is that we don't make a lot of money on YouTube. So for us to invest in seven different stamp positioner tools, which would probably cost around $500, we aren't going to make up that cost in our video. So it doesn't really make sense for us to do that when we already have a stamping positioner that we like and works really well. Why would I go and invest in four different other ones just to do one video on them? I definitely think it's a lot more of the reason of the cost factor of getting all of these tools. You have to store all these tools somewhere. And then again, you're only going to do one video of that type. So what's the point? Um, but yeah, that's one of the reasons definitely why that that happens. All right. Now, why do some content creators or influencers avoid certain companies or not show certain brands? There could be a few reasons behind this. One of them, maybe they haven't heard of the brand or maybe the brand is just not their typical style. Like I know I like modern, I like clean, simple, I like florals. So me personally, I'm not gonna go out and buy some sort of like rustic vintage mixed media stamp, at least not often. And I'm probably not gonna show those companies very often um, because they're just not a part of my personal style. Two, sometimes people are on design teams or they work with companies in a certain capacity that have exclusivity contracts which means you're only allowed to use things maybe over a certain period of time um, that is sold at that store. Those things exist and are out there and there's nothing wrong with that. If you're working for a company that you truly love, why not? Another reason why you might see more, some companies more than others also has to do with that affiliate commission we talked about earlier. Affiliate programs like to actually um, have the software to pay an influencer commission to show your product costs money. And it actually, the certain programs cost a lot of money. And so there's certain companies, generally the smaller ones that don't have affiliate programs. Um, so I would say that there's certain content creators that will not work with those companies because they say, okay, um, you know, I'm showing your product for free and I'm getting absolutely no guarantee of anything in return. And there's no possible way to get anything in return for, and if I'm, yeah, I mean, you're only going to earn the money. You're only going to earn any sort of income based on your views. And again, it's not a lot. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I totally understand and can respect the decision for content creators to say, you know what, um, certain brands I'm just not going to use on my channel because I don't make any commission for me personally. So for me personally, when it comes to affiliate programs, whether a company has an affiliate program or not, um, I will use. I use affiliate links. I use affiliate programs. Um, I just recently did my taxes and my channel costs multiple thousands of dollars to run. Um, and it's free content that I'm putting out there majority of the time. Um, and the last couple of years I have things that are paid like courses and membership programs and things like that to help with the costs, obviously, because I wouldn't be able to afford that on my own. Um, and it makes no sense. I mean, I, if you're spending a, a significant amount of money on your channel, it is a business at the end of the day. It doesn't need to make a profit. Um, and so for me personally, I will work with companies without an affiliate program, but more than likely that will take a back seat. So I will only work with them if it's something like I truly think is the most amazing thing. And also it will not show up in my channel every week or anything like that. It might show up here and there and um, that's okay. All right, everyone, I've talked enough and babbled enough and refilmed this video enough times so that I hopefully don't get myself into trouble. Um, I hope some of these things were interesting. If you have any further questions or um, things that are unclear or anything like that, feel free to comment below in the video. Don't forget. And don't forget, these are based on my personal experiences and experiences of friends that I talk to in the industry who do what I do. Um, so uh, if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, I can clarify more in the comments. Uh, happy to do so. And thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you next week for another video. Bye.